And a good morning to you, gang. It's Wednesday, the 19th of January. July. <coughs> good morning, gang. It's Wednesday, the 19th of July, 2017. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk, coming to you live from the Mirable Studio in Royal Berkshire, complete with wrong date this morning as well, boys and girls. Oh, all, all, all the fault finders were waiting then to text me, but I corrected myself, didn't I? I corrected myself before you even could get your finger on that keypad. Correction is the only way, boys and girls. It's the only way. Correction. I have to say, uh, I saw the news yesterday about this business about... Um, uh, young people's institutions and uh, there's a lot of violence go on there and we need to do more to protect uh, the young people that are in there. Well, I'm sorry, I watched that programme and I thought, well, if you didn't do anything wrong, you wouldn't end up in there. What's all this molly coddling going on all the time? They need to be corrected. <clears throat> we need to send in people with whips and punishment implements, possibly torture. That's what we need to do. So when a young person... What, doesn't matter. Young, old, doesn't matter. When someone steals something from a supermarket, whether it be, you know, a packet of peas or a large 65-inch television, which I saw some of those yesterday, oh, in John Lewis, then they need to be punished. They need to be bought on the telly of BBC One. It could be a new game show. It could be a new game show. They could be bought onto the telly on BBC One Colour on a Saturday night, boys and girls just before casualty, and have fingernails extracted live on air. And the pain, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And then you get those people in the, that read the Daily Mirror, wouldn't you? You get the people that read the Daily Mirror. Oh, no, you, you shouldn't do that to them. They must have had a reason to steal things from people. You don't understand them. Get real love. Pull their fingernails out. That's the thing to do. <clears throat> all this molly coddling going on. So if you want to end up in prison, you, if you know it's a really bad place to be, and that you might get... It's not prison, is it? It's Borstal. Same thing, dear. Same thing, but for younger people. If you don't want to end up in there, don't nick from people, and don't stab people, and don't murder people, and don't do bad things. I didn't do any of those things, so I've never been in a Borstal. Oh, dear me, do me a favour. Well, what about that rain last night? God's sake, thunder and lightning here in Royal Berkshire. Did you see the people in Cornwall? They have, they seem to have it bad down there, don't they? I know some people in Cornwall. I'm, I must contact them and see if their house was washed away in torrents of water. God's sake, man. Uh, in the sun this morning, Britain was battered by thunder, lightning and torrential downpours. Overnight and storms are set to continue to affect parts of the country today. We're not here in Royal Berkshire. We had our storm last night. It was a lot of rain, but to be honest, didn't seem to be much uh, thunder and lightning. I heard, um, uh, I was sitting in my living room last night watching some television uh, with my mate Ron, and there was this really loud dripping going on. I thought, what's that noise? Because I had the windows slightly open, because it was still quite warm, wasn't it? A drip, 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 really loud. And I went outside, and what it was, there was a, um, a plastic... Uh, you know, like a, a storage box in the garden, which was upturned underneath the gutter, which was overflowing. And that's what did that. I love to get Adam the plumber in to fix my overflowing gutter. I've got a few jobs for him, actually. <laughs> when, whenever I eventually get round to inviting him here, round to the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire. Um, emergency services were called out, according to the sun last night, as flash floods ripped through homes and lightning strikes sparked house fires. Now, see, that always worries me, a lightning strike um, on your house. And nothing you can do about it, is there? <clears throat> You know, other than send, other than send like a naughty... This could be a punishment for one of those so-called youth offenders. You know, when it's lightning, you can say, well, we'll let you off if you now go outside, stand in a garden with your hand like that to deflect the lightning away from... That's a great word, isn't it? Deflect. To deflect the lightning away from my home, through you and straight down to ground. That would work. Always worry about, you know, you've all, we've all got these little television aerials sticking out from my roof. I mean, ideal lightning conductors, but we don't seem to worry about it, do we? Well, I mean, I do. As soon as I see flashes of lightning, I do actually think about going around and unplugging everything. I mean, can you imagine if the Mirable Studio was to be struck by lightning? No more shows. 
That would that would upset you, wouldn't it? I know it would. This is probably your highlight of the day. Watching me, I can understand that. After I finish that, I watch myself several more times, over and over again, much to the annoyance of my mate. Back to the story. Residents in the Cornish village of Coverack. Don't sound nice, that, does it? Coverack. I don't like that word, Coverack. We've got a, we've got a new shopping centre opening here in Bracknell, and they've called it the Lexicon. And that horrible word, Lexicon. I think that's horrible. I don't know why it's a horrible word. Maybe because there's an X in there, a lexicon. Don't like the name of the shopping centre here. Mind you, it's far, it's far better than the shopping centre in Reading, which I'll come on to in a minute. Um, uh, Cornish village of Kovrak had to be winched to safety. Residents had to be winched to safety. Of course, cool, they need a big winch for some people, wouldn't they? Not me anymore. Oh, slim, slim, slim. Uh, after a four-foot deluge... Washed away houses and tore up roads. Rescue teams also pumped water from homes in Tunbridge, Wales, Kent. Oh, it's posh there. My aunt used to live there. Uh, after receiving 60 emergency calls in less than an hour. Meanwhile, firefighters tackled a blaze that spread across the roots, roofs of two houses in Bradwell, Essex. <coughs> after one was struck by lightning shortly before 4am. Terrible dear. So uh, there's some wonderful, wonderful pictures in uh, all the papers this morning, actually. Uh, the Sun online has some particularly good photographs of lightning in the sky and, and striking uh, that one of the buildings. Now, what's that one? Spin Spinnaker Tower in Portsmouth. You can actually see, and the lightning comes across like that and then back down like that and, and, and to the tower. Wow. Does that make a really big bang when that happens? There's one here, there's another picture here in the sun, which, uh, sorry you can't see, uh, which appears, to, you know, to, to be striking a street lamp. You know, which are, which are not too tall. You imagine yourself, uh, like, the your house is much taller probably than a street lamp, isn't it? And it does worry me a little bit, uh, lightning striking houses and that sort of thing. But uh, we're OK at the moment. We're OK at the moment. Uh, so yesterday... Uh, Monday Monday night's karaoke was great, uh, as Gustav mentions here. Morning, Butch. Just to say, you were it was a really good night at the Monday karaoke. You really were on form, and the way you put on that comical singing voice really puts other nervous singers at their ease. What comical singing voice, dear? That's a professional voice that I'm. I'm there's no put on, dear. That's how I sing. Comical singing voice. I beg your pardon. It's funny, Gustav. You know. As I've said so many times before, sometimes you do an art and you think, and on your way home, you think, just, look, I've just found some Christmas tape. <laughs> that was my mum's. That was my mum's Christmas tape when she died. I, one of the things, for some reason, I took was a little box of, um, of various sellotape things. I've never bought, sell never bought sellotape. There's still loads of it here. My mum had loads of it in a little brown bag somewhere. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, sometimes it does take someone else to tell you, yes, that was a good night. Because you think it's just a normal night or a bit lacklustre. I thought it was a bit lacklustre from my part on Monday. But then you get tired sometimes. It's difficult to do it. And um, <clears throat> you, you don't, you don't realise that it has been a good night. It often does take someone else to tell you that. And that, that's the absolute truth. I rarely come away from somewhere thinking that was a really good night. That, that's true, that is. That's true. A little bit later, maybe an hour later, a day later, a week later. Oh, that karaoke night was really good or something like that. You know, it's funny, isn't it, really? Uh, Gustav says, uh, oh, yes, that, 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 I've finished this message. Thank you very much, Gustav. Good morning, Ben Parker. Morning, Ben. Morning, Ben. Good news, Ben. You no longer have to repair my device because I've got a new one. Couldn't be bothered in the end. I thought, oh, I don't think this is going to work. So I, so I chucked it. Although I still have the hard drive, Ben. Which I've, I have tried plugging, if you're still there, Ben, I don't know if you're still with us. Uh, if you're still there, I plugged the hard drive into the external USB socket of the new Humax machine. But it's still, I can't, I can, uh, the, the hard drive's working, there's files on there, but I can't watch them. So perhaps you could, <clears throat> perhaps next time I see you I can give you that hard drive. And you can see if you can get the programs off there and maybe convert them to MP4 or something like that on a separate hard drive. Could, could I do that with you, please? Please. Good morning, Ben. Hope you're well. Hope last night was all right. 
Uh, Diane's there. Good morning to Diane, who's wishing us all a very good day. Morning to you, Diane. Uh, Stuart James. Hello, Stuart. Good morning. Pamela Ewing. Pam Ewing. <laughs> I like Pam Ewing. Do you like me? I've got green on today. My niece bought me this one. It's nice, isn't it? I couldn't wear this a few weeks ago. My niece bought me this for Christmas. Morning to Ray Reynolds. Heidi, hi, hi uh, uh, Ray. John Aitken, how did you sleep with the storm? Very well. Very, very well, actually. I sleep very well if it's raining outside. I leave the window open because underneath my um, my bedroom window, I've got I've actually got two windows in my bedroom. I've got like one that side and that side. I had that side put in a couple of years ago. One of the best things I ever did, I had extra windows put in the side of the house because there were none. It was just a wall. And uh, underneath, there's like a plastic thing. Uh, you couldn't stand on it. It's very fragile. But it, the window, the, the, the rain drops onto that. And it's, and it's lovely. It really is. Uh, ben says, uh, you heard a dripping while watching TV with Ronnie. Was it his time of a month ago? Oh, vile. Vile, Ben. Naughty things to say at this time of the morning. <laughs> oh, he leaks all over the place. Believe me, my mate. Oh, little patches of water everywhere. It's worse than my incontinent cat. Who's still alive? Yes, she's still going. She's still going. Uh, uh, the video didn't just stop. It probably was you, Ben. The video doesn't stop at this end. I now have 300 meg here and 20 meg up. Thank you very much. Probably your end. Um, let me see. Uh, thank you, Ben. Ben's going to do try and try and take the uh, 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 hard drive. I'll keep that one. I'll keep that one just in case you can do something with it. As far as I know, there's nothing wrong with that hard drive because it, you can plug it into a computer or anything like that. Actually, if I plug it into a computer, it can't see it, although I can see it on the disk, disk management. It doesn't come up as a drive, so I, I haven't done anything to it. I haven't like tried to change anything or anything like that. I thought I'd leave it to you being a professional. Thank you very much, uh, Ben Parker. Oh, yes. Um, so yesterday, uh, went to uh, Slimming World yesterday, as always, a lovely day to be cycling as well. It's, it's, it's on the same road as my churches, Corpus Christi and Wokingham is uh, where I go to church on a Sunday. And um, uh, the church is at one end and the Slimming World place is at the other end. It's actually held in the Salvation Army Church. So it's well, it's, a, it's more, more of a room than the church, you know. I, d I did, did laugh, actually. There's a sign on the notice boards in there. All, all, all the Slimming World people are sitting there. There's only three fellas. There's me and two others there. And ev ev all the rest are, are ladies. And we do have a bit of a laugh with them. On the sign there, it says, Come and join us on Sunday for morning prayers. 10 till 10, 15 a.m. I thought, blimey, that's quick. You know, I might have to swap churches. Father David had us in there for an hour and a quarter on Sunday, dear. It's only 15 minutes if you go to the Salvation Army. So I might have to change churches. It would give me a little bit more time to play with, <laughs> to play with during the day. So we got in, uh, <coughs> uh, went up there to, to do my way in and... Da, 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 da. Oh dear. Gone up one and a half pounds. Oh, so I'm feeling deflated. I'm feeling deflated. But as Linda says, and she's quite right. Sometimes you don't lose weight, but you lose inches. And I said to you last week, I can now get into all the shirts that I wasn't able to get into uh, a couple of weeks ago. The shirts, I now have to do my swimming shorts up quite, quite a lot. They were really tight. Didn't have to do the string up. Now I have to pull the string in and do it up. So the weight is coming off, uh, but occasionally it does go up a bit. Don't know why. I haven't broken my rules this week. There's been no crisps, chocolate, cakes, bread, nothing like that at all. <clears throat> I've absolutely stuck to the plan, and yet it's gone up a little bit. But we don't worry about that, because if you remember, that happened a few weeks ago. Do you remember? So it was down, 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 up, down, down, up. So the general trend is down. So when it blips like that occasionally, you don't worry about that. And all the ladies in Slimming World, they all say that now and again. They say, well, I don't understand. I put on a pound this week and yet I've stuck. And that is just how it goes. The body is fighting back, desperately trying to hold on to those bars of chocolate that we are trying to ejaculate from out of our bodies. Absolutely. The chocolate and the crisps and the oil must be ejaculated out of us. 
is the only way, boys and girls. Might be the wrong word. I don't know. Uh, so there we are. We're not worrying too much about that. <sighs> Let's have a look. Um, <clears throat> one moment, please. Let's have a look. Uh, ben says you should feel inflated. I am feeling a bit inflated today. I am. Mind you, I didn't do too... I'm a little bit lacking on the talk shows at the moment. What it is, it's summer and I'm finding a lot to do. There's a hedge out in the garden that I've been meaning to cut since Sunday morning. Believe me, it still hasn't been done. It won't get done today yet. I'm finding things to do at the moment. That's why there hasn't been too many shows. Good morning, Yago. Are you missing me, Yago? Oh, Yago used to work at that place in Clapham. I used to work out, don't you, darling? Uh, he still works there, I think. Morning, Adam. The plumber's with us this morning. Morning, Adam. You're a little bit late. Don't forget to catch up later in the beginning of the show that you may have missed here. Gustav says, how can you get deflated when you're packing the pounds on? What do you mean, packing them on, dear? <clears throat> what do you mean packing them on? Look! Do you want me to bloody well stand up? Look! Look at this! A few weeks ago it was like that, weren't it? Look now! Thank you very much. No, not holding my stomach. As you can see, that button, that one there, that one there, that is still a little bit tight, that one, isn't it? I suppose. But I couldn't even do this up a couple of weeks ago, so shut up, Gustav. Dear me. One minute he compliments you, then he takes it away, doesn't he? Who do you think you are? God? Dear me. Um, muscle weighs more than fat. Just keep telling yourself that. Shut up. Shut up. Yes, Stuart, we must get rid of all this fat and oil from our bodies. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, Teresa. Oh, Teresa Adams. Oh, I thought it was going to say Teresa May then, Teresa. Not that I'm happy that you're here, but I thought Theresa May had just joined the programme this morning. Looking for little tidbits of advice, she is, I think. <laughs> and I'm not wearing a girdle, no. I'm certainly not wearing a girdle. Hmm. So that was that was a slimmer's word and a nice... And it's it's actually... It's not just the weight loss there. We, we do have a bit of a laugh for about an hour and a half. I chat to everyone and... Uh, they they talk about their successes or not, as the case may be. And now now and again, you see, I've been out twice. Uh, the the week I did the most weight loss, which which, which was I did it twice. Now three and a half pounds, I think I did two weeks, three and a half pounds. <clears throat> On those weeks, I'd I'd been out twice for a meal, and not counted what I was eating. So it's strange, isn't it, how it works? But you look at the general trend. The general trend, which is like Gustav, you look at the general trend of your finances and you'll probably find they're down. Down, 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 down like that, isn't it? You see? That's what you look at, the general trend. So I'd be very, very worried, Gustav. You may have to be moved to one of those tower blocks, dear. You may have to be moved to one of those tower blocks from that little place you're living in now. Gustav rents a hard-to-let property. In on the White City Estate, a ghastly place. To... Have you ever been there? <gasps> oh my God! Well, I tell you how bad it is. At night time, you go around there. It's so much street light in there that it's like daylight. Horrible place, <clears throat> mind you. It's not the or only horrible place that I've been to. Reading's another one. Reading's another horrible place. Yesterday, uh, after I got back home here, I had my lunch, which was a couple of fried eggs in fry light. Tin of baked beans and a uh, packet of onions. I do like fried onions in fry light, that is. Fried onions in fry light. And, um, oh, hang on a minute. Have I missed something there? Ooh, might have missed something. I, was, I thought I just saw my nephew pop up there. No, no, nothing there. Oh, how strange. I, th I thought I saw something there. Um, so after that, uh, my mate came round. Well, actually, he came round while I was having my milk. He didn't want anything to eat. So he had to sit there and watch me eat my lunch. Then we went to Reading. I wanted to go to John Lewis and get a new Humax um, hard disk recorder. I've got free sat here. So I've got the satellite dish, but I don't pay for any subscription telly. I, re I refuse to pay for subscription telly, especially when I can use my sister's Netflix for nothing, which I haven't used there yet. I've never watched Netflix. I still, I'm still finding it a bit odd that you can watch programmes coming down the line and there's no announcer in between. Because I wanted to do that job. I wanted to be the voice behind the BBC One Globe or the man sitting there introducing the next programmes on Thames Television. 
You may remember the great Tom Edwards and uh, David Hamilton, who used to sit there in between the programmes. And a very good morning to you from Thames Television. Uh, just coming up before 9.30, uh, we've got a cartoon for you, and that's followed by programmes for schools and colleges. This is Thames from London, it's 9.30, and then you get the da-da-da. I wanted to do that job. Now there are no announcers on ITV. <coughs> well, you do have announcers on ITV, but they're a bit... A bit bland, a bit, a bit too happy, aren't they? You know, not authoritative. There were some great voices, some great announcers on BBC One. Shall, shall I find one for you now? You know, people with voices that you would uh, be feel compelled to listen to. Hang on, let's uh, BBC One announcement, nineteen seventies. Let's go. Let's type that in. Uh, yeah, here we are. It, it, here's one. Let's have a listen to this voice. Uh, this this is a proper BBC announcer, OK? Coming up now. Here we go. No, I don't think that's the one I was looking for. <laughs> ah! Let's try this one. BBC One closed down. Let's try this. Oh, come Oh, no, it's blooming playing an advert now, isn't it? I hate that. One moment, please. Skip ad. Here we go. Oh, hang on a minute. I can't find any announcements now. Let's try that one. Now, with the time approaching three o'clock, BBC One is returning to a trade test transmission. Hey, I see proper voices. Now, BBC One, Dick Powell and Ellen Drew star in the Preston Sturgis film Christmas in July. Hey, uh, see? Proper announcers, dear. Not like these ones with accents, dear, from all over the country. Welsh and Scottish, Midlands, Cornwall, all these different accents. We want proper BBC English. I wanted to do that job. I think I would have been good at that job. Now on BBC One, let's see what's happening down in Albert Square with EastEnders. See, I could have done that. <clears throat> I would have loved to have done that, thank you very much, yes. Uh, Daryl says, try Matson in Gloucestershire. Is that what? Did they have a, a lot of rain down there or something? Did they? Strange. Kevin's bought a new laptop, so I'm on his laptops this morning. Yes. What's a crocky fire stick? I don't know what that is. A crocky fire stick. I've no idea what that is. Is that on Amazon? Can I buy one of those on Amazon or something like that? <laughs> anyway, so we went down to uh, the most awful place, Reading. Now, I wanted to go to John Lewis to get this Humax uh, video recorder. Why, oh, why? I didn't just ring them up and ask them to deliver it to the Waitrose in Bracknell. I don't know. But for some reason, I thought, well, let's get this done now. You know, I've suddenly got the inkling to go out and purchase this item. Because it can take me a long time to buy something. Oh, yes. There's a certain armchair I've been testing in John Lewis now for two years. That is absolutely true. Every time I go to John Lewis, I go, I go I'm just going to have a little look at the furniture. And my mate says, he says, when are you going to buy it? And I, just, I sit in it for about 10 minutes. It's electric. And you push this button. And I have been testing out this chair now for two years. Can't part with the money, can I? Can't part with the money at all. But to get to John Lewis, you have to go down this road... Uh, in Reading, it is horrible in Reading. I'm telling you now, don't go there shopping. The people that are walking around there, cans of lager, you know, people with dogs with one leg missing, sitting outside cash point machines. And don't say, oh, that's the homeless. No, most of them aren't homeless. That's it. They are professional beggars, dear. This is the problem I've got with giving to people in the street. How do you know? They are who they say they are. We've seen paper, stories in the papers for years about professional beggars in the street. You know, there they are begging and da, 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 and they come to the end of the day. And they walk around the corner, corner. Someone picks them up in a big flash car and off they go home. Never give. Don't give to beggars. That's what it's like in Reading. It's horrible there. You just stand there and look around you at the sort of people that are walking around. Ghastly place. Awful. And the weird thing, and there's John Lewis in the middle. I mean, they've got to pull out of Reading. That's the only thing to it, dear. <clears throat> they need to pull out of Reading. So, of course, once you're in those doors, I feel a little bit safe. I actually didn't feel safe walking around in Reading yesterday. 
And they spent a lot of money doing it up a while ago. Only to have, like, as it is now. Not, not, not a pleasant place. So we got into Reading. <clears throat> got into John Lewis. Uh, I'd already rung ahead and reserved my item. Went down to the audio video section. I said, hello, I ordered so What's your name, please? Said, OK, I'll go and get it for you. And out it came straight from around the back. Side so paid for it, and that's it. I got it in a little bag. Meantime, so that's, that's all done. All done. All done. And I had a £30 gift card that uh, someone, uh, I think it was Ronnie, actually gave me at Christmas. Oh, that was it. Ronnie had bought me a, a, a Google Chrome thing, but I didn't need it. Because I've got an, a very old Apple TV and I stream onto the Apple TV in my um, uh, bedroom. I forgot something on the phone or whatever. Um, so uh, we swapped that for a gift card, a 30, 30, 30 gift card. So I handed that over and uh, handed the uh, uh, credit card over for the rest of it. So that was all well and done. Good. And then we looked at the tellies. Oh, my God. 65-inch tellies seem to be the norm in a lot of these shops now. We've, we've gone from 50 to 65. Now, I've got a 50 downstairs. It's, it's years old. Not even a smart TV downstairs I've got. And some of those tellies in there. Oh, and I have to say, <clears throat> the ones with the best picture quality from what we could work out were the QLED Samsung models. S-A-M-S-U-N. I had them all set out. The Sony, I, I have to set the pictures all right. The Sony picture's good. But I think that the best quality televisions now seem to be the Samsung ones. Really bright, vivid pictures. So a lot of them in 4K. Now, I don't think that any of the broadcasters at the moment are doing 4K yet, if I'm rightly saying. If I'm wrong, do let me know. But I'm sure none of the broadcasters, Sky or any, there's a phone number as well, I just open there if you want to call in at any point, OK? Um, yes, I don't think any of the broadcasters are doing 4K at the moment. So you'd be hard pushing, you'd have to buy all the stuff on discs. And I believe Netflix, I think, I'm, I'm sure Netflix... Uh, and YouTube have got some 4K stuff on there, but not not broadcast type things like ITV or BBC. I don't think they're doing any of that yet. But the Samsung pictures appear to be superior over all the others. The OLED, just in case you're thinking of buying another telly. Uh, if I buy another one, it, it will be a, a 65 inch. But um, I I generally tend I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a quick upgrader. You know, I don't just buy something because something new is out and has superseded whatever I've got. So we spent some time looking at the tellies in there. You can get a 65-inch television now for about £750, £800. Pounds. <clears throat> and you can go further up the scale. You can pay four, £5,000 pounds for one. You know, depends what you want, really. I quite like the curved ones where they come round a little bit like that. That's quite a nice experience. Some people like them, some people don't. I don't think it would be a fad. I think they would be around for a while. But the 3D TVs, when they first came out, I always knew um, that they were going to be a little bit of a fad, you know? I didn't think that they'd stay um, as, it, as it is for so long. I knew they disappeared. John Aitken's got a Panasonic TV, surround sound, and Blu-ray. Oh, yeah, well, Blu-ray, that's old now, John. Blu-ray, that's been and gone, isn't it? <laughs> I've got a Blu-ray downstairs. I did buy a few Blu-ray DVDs as well, but they were like 25 quid, weren't they? Whereas the normal ones were 10 quid. I don't know how they managed to um, uh, do it like that. Apart from the people in Reading, the traffic is always a blooming nightmare there. Really is. You come out of Reading, sort of going to Bracknell, there's only one route out, and it's always, always queuing to get out, and you're in this blooming jam for about five or ten minutes, which does my head in. So that was that. Came back here, watered my plants. Plants, <clears throat> we got a new co-op opening here. They've just done up the co-op. That's the excitement round here this week. They're reopening the co-op on Friday, and I've already got some vouchers. Where are they? They've sent me some co-op vouchers to go in and try out my new co-op. Look at this. Two pounds off when you spend ten pounds or more at the Hanworth co-op. <laughs> at the moment, the co-op, they, they, they closed it to redo it out. But <clears throat> while it's closed, they've got this like porter cabin next to it. And uh, that remains open. And, and they, they have like just basics, really. Bread and... 
and milk and, and, and some fresh items, newspapers, I think they have in there as well. So if you can't go to the main supermarket, you can just use, lose, use this little porter cabin. I said, do you do cigarettes or booze for me? He said, no. I said, well, good job you won't. Round here, dear. They'll have that straight open with a crowbar, nicking all the stuff. Dreadful people stealing things left, right and centre. So that's that. Um, oh, by the way, I meant to tell you, I was in Audi last week. If you're an early Christmas present buyer, and remember, we're now closer to next Christmas than we were last Christmas. There are some wonderful wooden children's gifts at the moment in Audi, which are not overpriced. Beautiful little things. I think I saw um, like a, a doll's house. There might have been a train set for, for both sexes, like girls and boys. Probably because Audi wants to be gender neutral, don't they? What is this obsession at the moment? <clears throat> have you noticed that? People at the moment are now... So th the obsession of the moment is gender. A few months ago, it was paedophilia, wasn't it? Everyone was going on and on about paedophilia. These stars at the BBC and pop stars and, and film people and all that. All this Peter. Well, that's disappeared now. We've now moved on to gender issues. And go on and on. So the latest thing... The latest thing on the gender issues is that uh, they they want uh, they're thinking of bringing in a law to stop advertisers advertisers stereotyping genders on their adverts. For example, for example, if there was a bloke like trying to work a washing machine, he's going, oh, I don't know how this works. Uh, that is now seen deemed as offensive. If there is a woman who is trying to fix a car and a bloke comes along, oh, come on, love, don't even try that. That is now deemed offensive. I mean, where do they find the time to think this crap up? It's not offensive, it's funny. We like to have a little giggle. There will be no humour left in this world, I'm telling you soon. As it carries on like that, they're all obsessed now by gender issues. Boy, girl. You heard it last week at the train station now. I think it's uh, London Transport or Transport for London, whatever they're called now. Uh, they're, the train announcements are no longer allowed to say, ladies and gentlemen, because it leaves out the transgender community. Oh, for God's sake, man. Where is it all coming from? Isn't there a school somewhere that now has... Toilets that are girls and boys so as not to um, offend one or the other. Oh, and it just goes on and on. And it, 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 it seems to be a London thing. It seems to be the people of London and in universities seem to have no better time as to think of the crap that they come out with and, and, and infects and infects my 50 inch old television Every single day with some other issue that's on there. Gender issues. At the moment, we are now obsessed with gender issues. We've moved on. I wonder what will be next. I wonder what it will be next. After, after they finish with all the gender crap, what will it be next? What will the University of whoever come out with at one of their focus groups next, eh? <laughs> <laughs> These people have got to be retarded or something to come out with a crap like this all the time, haven't they? Ben says now it's German choir boys and cardinals in gay drug fueled sex orgy. Is that the latest? Is it? Is that the latest thing on the on on the news? Is it? Oh dear, poor John doesn't know if he's Arthur or Martha. Well, I think we all know that one, John. Anyway, we, we move away from that. <laughs> that. That came from the Audi children's toy stories, that, that bit. Have we moved on to that? Yeah, so if you want some children's Christmas gifts, go into Audi now. They've got some lovely wooden children's toys in there. And um, uh, you'll be able to pick them up and, and save them maybe for Christmas. So I came back here, um, set up my new Humax Freesat 
video recorder. My friend Chris uh, gave me a Freeview one. I don't have a Freeview one, so that's handy as well. And the thing is with the Freeview one, I can swap the hard disks on there. So if there's anything that I want to save, you know, I, I can keep it on the hard disk. So that's great. So that's in situation as well. And of course, we might want that back now that he knows I've got another one that's working. A free sat one. That's the one that works with the dishes and the free view one. It's the thing that's worked with the TV aerials, you see. Uh, went to bed, uh, got up yesterday. I made chili beans yesterday, which is like various beans. Uh, baked beans, kidney beans, mixed beans, tins of chopped up tomatoes, chili. It says put one teaspoon of chili. Do me a favour, darling. Four. Four teaspoons of chilli powder in there. Blows your head off. Burns the mouth as it goes back down your throat. Oh, it's lovely. Share with, with some rice and uh, bits and pieces in there. Uh, watch two episodes of The Dark. Have you been watching that? That's very good. We thought it was only three episodes long altogether. but Or, or is it two episodes? One, what, 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 watched one and two last night. Yeah, we watched one and two last night. It looked like it was going to be the end. But I think it's a TV series. So I don't know how many parts of that there is. But The Dark... Excellent programme, BBC One Colour, on Tuesday nights at nine o'clock after the excellent Holby City. Oh, Holby City. And it, it showed this woman massaging her heart. Oh, no. Could you do that? She had her hand in his chest and just going like this with the heart. <laughs> As always, Jack was very cool, calm and collected with the whole thing, wasn't she? Hey, there's a phone number if you want to call in, 20 8144 is my local London number this morning. And uh, always the same number, that, OK? 20 8144 uh, is my phone number. And uh, that was my day. By, by the time Ronnie went, it was about up past 12. So I came to bed about 1 o'clock. I sat down the stairs, banged out a couple of tunes on my piano very badly. And, and then went to bed and I've had a nice sleep and here I am now. I went to sleep listening to the rain, pitter pattering on the wall. We didn't really have that much lightning and thunder here. <coughs> uh, and, and the lightning we did see, it was it seemed to be quite far away, you know. Not close by here at all. Hmm, that's it. Um, all right. <coughs> now we've got some news stories to read you uh, this morning. Look at this. Now, here's a reason... Here's a reason I would never hire a car on holiday. Uh, I've been to Florida. The last time I went to Florida, I was a bit concerned about this because um, in America, certainly Florida, great distances have to be achieved. And I thought the only way you could go around was by, by, by hiring a car. But not the case. You know, you, there's shuttles taking you to Disney from most of the hotels. And if at the end of the day, you cut, and, and there's buses going, so little buses, only cost a dollar, go all the way to the shopping places. Uh, and um, if at the end of the day, you can't get a bus or a shuttle somewhere, you just call a cab. And it's, it's quite cheap in Florida to call a cab. Very, very cheap indeed. Um, how to fight back against the car hire traps. In the Daily Mail this morning, car hire firms are stinging holidaymakers with rip-off charges for scratches, Child car seats and petrol refills, a money mail investigation has found. We can reveal that firms are charging up to £8,400 if you damage a family saloon in Europe and haven't bought the extra insurance. Because they, whenever you go and hire a car in another country, they always offer you this um, top-up insurance. I can't remember what it's called now. Collision Damage Waiver, that's it, CDW Insurance. Now, you hear radio shows over here and they get experts on and they tell you that you don't need that. Well, some holidaymakers claim that they are being billed for repairs that never take place. In some cases, the fees are only showing up on their bank statements when they return home. Others are arriving at European pickup desks to find that renting a sat-nav or booster seat for two weeks costs triple the price of buying a new one back in England. Here, we expose this year's biggest car hire cons and explain how you could save thousands of pounds by paying ahead. So here we go. If you damage your car on holiday, you usually have to pay the first few hundred pounds of any repair bill before the insurance kicks in. This is in the Daily Mail this morning. This is known as excess, but in some cases the excess is so enormous that you could end up paying more than the cost of your entire family holiday in repair fees. Money Mail has discovered that this week budget 
for example, charges a damage excess of 8,416 pounds on a Mercedes E-Class saloon from Faro Airport in Portugal. This is nearly 10 times the rental bill of £846.88 for the week. I mean, it's, it's shocking. And I've seen so many of these stories in the papers over the years about um, car hire firms um, in uh, various parts of the world charging such things. Car hire firms are aware that these prices are unaffordable and terrifying for many families, so we'll try to sell you so-called excessive waiver insurance. In principle, this is a good idea, as it means you don't have to repay any of the repair bill. Don't buy this from your car hire at the pickup desk, or you'll pay up to £170. It's much cheaper to get a policy from a third-party insurer before you leave for your holiday, i.e. over here. So, I mean... I, I I haven't been away for a while now, but whenever I go away, I tend to go down to Thomas Cook. I just walk into Thomas Cook. I don't have to muck up about on the blooming internet, finding this and finding that, transferring money to places that you're not quite sure who they are. And yet they people happily send five grand over the blooming phone, don't they? Oh, no holiday. Where's my money gone? No, I, I, just, I just go into Thomas Cook. Hello, I want to go here, here and here. I want a business class flight and I want a three-star hotel would do me. What what can you do, please? And the bloke there, he sits there and types it all there. Now, if something goes wrong with any part of that holiday, you just contact Thomas Cook and they have to sort it out. Whereas you do it on the internet, you book your hotel there, your flight there, something goes wrong, you have got to sort it out. I can't be doing with all that. Um, firms such as reducemyexcess.co.uk and iCarHireInsurance.com offer cover for less than £3 a day or annual cover for about 40 quid. Use comparison website moneymaxim.co.uk to find the cheapest deals. So there you are. I mean, get the insurance at this end, you see. Ignore pushy staff at the collection desks abroad who will try and tell you that this third-party insurance is not valid. However, bear in mind that we still need to block off a deposit on your credit card if you don't buy their waiver policy. Then, if you do get charged repairs, you have to pay it up front and claim it from the insurance people here afterwards, you see. So it's just, it's a lot of mucking around, isn't it, eh? You know, I, I can't be bothered with it. I'd rather not hire a car. Well, I didn't when I went to Florida. <clears throat> we didn't hire a car. Did, did we, did I feel that I missed anything out by not hiring a car? No, not at all. Went with my nephew about three years ago now. I took my nephew there. We never had a car. I was concerned that we didn't have a car, but within two or three days of us being there, there you go, don't, don't need a car, don't need one. I know some people like to be flash and they hire a very expensive car. Oh, look at me in this car. Well, it's not about that for me. Not about that for me at all. It says that even for cheaper models, families could find themselves lumbered with huge bills if they scratch or dent the car. Quotes obtained from the budget website shows the excess is £5,614 for a Volvo or £3,346 for a Mini Cooper convertible. When we called budget to check the quotes and told them that some of the excess charges were approaching 10000 Who's got £10,000 to fuck away, chuck away? It's shocking. This is budget. It's not like it's an unknown car company, is it? Anyway, uh, customer service admitted, that's pretty outrageous, that's a new one on me. After checking his computer, he said, yes, 9,594 euros excess on the Mercedes. The higher-end vehicles do have higher excess. It varies from country to country. For Portugal, that's normal. <laughs> Why would you want to hire a car and, and worry about that? <clears throat> I mean, there and again, we do dent cars and we do put little scratches on cars, don't we? Why would you want that worry when you go on holiday like that? I wouldn't. Several money mail readers claim car hire films have tried to charge them hundreds of pounds for dents and scratches that were never repaired. It comes with Europe Car, another big company, Europe Car, facing a scandal over accusations that it overcharged customers for car hire pairs by £30 million. Pounds. Um, as an example here, uh, a lady is in dispute with, dispute with Europe Car in Switzerland because she says she's billed almost £800 for a small scuff mark on the bumper. 
I signed to say I didn't cause the damage as at no point did I do did I go into anything. So perhaps it happened when the car was parked. I managed to block my credit card before they could take the money and have, they've been trying to get it ever since. The worst part is I asked them if they had actually repaired the car and the answer was no. <clears throat> they suggested it probably wouldn't be repaired, therefore they're charging me a repair bill for repairs not even carried out. So, I mean, be very, very careful. Be very careful. It also says here hiring a sat-nav or child seats from car hire giants can cost more than double the price of buying a brand new one. Money Mail, find that hurts, massive car rental company, is charging £204 to hire a sat-nav powered by TomTom -tom for a two-week break uh, in August. Yet a basic TomTom -tom bought by Curry's from Curry's can cost you £87. Pounds. Of course, you don't need a sat-nav anymore. You don't need to buy a, um, a, 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 a sat-nav uh, separate unit. You can get it all on your mobile phone now. An excellent free sat-nav that I use every night on the way to work is Waze. W-A-Z-E. Now, I know some of my American, some of the Manilow girls in America uh, use this as well. And, it, and it's free. Waze. W-A-Z-E. Down, do yourself a favour, download that onto your mobile phone uh, when I finish the show today. It's all free, W-A-Z-E, and try it out. It's got traffic and everything in there, all completely free of charge. Now and again, you'll get a little advert flash up at the top telling you where the nearest McDonald's or something like that is, but it's worth it. I use it every night, Waze, W-A-Z-E. Don't be buying sat -nabs anymore. You don't need to do that anymore. Uh, ben says... Do what I do. Get a, get a new car put in the garage every three years in Florida. Is that what you do? <laughs> and then there's the fuel thing. The fuel thing. Putting the petrol in. You should always opt for the return full petrol policy <coughs> as other options will almost certainly cost more. It might sound tempting to avoid having to refill your car on your way to the airport. But it's worth doing so if you have time. Europe Car's refilling service, for example, allows you to bring it back without a full tank. They will charge you at the national average litre price as published by petrolprices.com. Oh, so Europe Car, that's fair enough. But the sting is the service charge of £1.60 a litre. <laughs> so if a typical tank holds 55 litres and you returned it empty, you'd be charged £88 in handling fees. So that's £1.60 a litre on top of the price of the petrol. It's outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. And then you get mystery charges, according to the Daily Mail. Harcar firms in the UK must always write to you before they charge you for damage. But Money Mail has heard from holidaymakers who hire cars abroad and then notice mystery deductions. Mystery deductions. Watch out for the extras that have been ticked on your booking form or are lurking in your final invoice. One driver says he was assured verbally by Europcar that it was free to add an additional driver when he picked up a car in Newcastle. But when he let later checked his statement, he had been billed for this anyway. Europcar says it was a, an administrative error. You see, a lot of the time, I'm sure these people um, put stuff on there, you know, these companies put stuff in there in the hope that you won't notice. I'm sure that's the case. Many people take photographs of scratches upon collection, but forget to take them upon drop-off as well. Take photos of the car on your smartphone after you have parked up at the rental firm to return it. These photos will be timed and dated in the effect in the event of a, of a dispute. So, yeah, I mean, when you pick that car up, go round with your camera... Take photos. And then when you drop it off, go round again with your camera, take photos and keep them. And there you've got the proof there. So rental cars, I mean, I wouldn't be having any of that rental cars business, I'm afraid. No, it, um, it's just the, the worry of something happening to that car and me being charged an arm and a leg afterwards just... It, it's just not worth it to me that, that I would do that. Really isn't. 
Anyway, we'll wrap up there today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for watching the show. Uh, we've got some birthdays to do from today and yesterday because we weren't here yesterday. First of all, today's birthday, our good friend in Australia, William Brougham. Happy birthday to William, all right? He's on uh, proper telly in Australia. Happy birthday to you, William. It's been a few years since we had a little cup of tea, isn't it? Was it Costa, Cuff Costa Coffee in, in Sydney? No. It was a lady's name, wasn't it? Annabelle's or something like that. Happy birthday, William. Hope you're well, sir. Uh, Frank Reardon. No relation to me. Just the same name. Happy birthday to Frank this morning. Uh, Maureen Howe. Greetings, Maureen. Hope you're well. Happy birthday, Maureen. Paul Johnson's birthday today. Young Josh. Josh Ward. Happy birthday, Josh. Uh, Lisa Parker today is 32 years old today. They're today's birthdays. And uh, just going back one to yesterday, as we weren't here on Tuesday. Uh, happy birthday to Claire Norton for yesterday. Happy birthday, Claire. As your little cat. Claire and the cat. Chris Moore. Happy birthday, Chris. Uh, Nicholas O. Odysseus, I think that's right, Nicholas Odysseus, happy birthday, Valerie Lancy, Paul Rogers, Valerie Lancy, hang on, did I do that one already, oh, you've got two, you've got two profiles there, Valerie, that's very greedy, dear, very greedy, you only have one, and uh, Margaret Dyer, they're all the birthdays uh, for today and yesterday, here comes the song, gang. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Thank you very much, gang. Have a nice birthday. Uh, ben says another option is to use a prepaid credit card to pay for your car hire. When they tell you how much the rental is will be, transfer that amount to the card and no more. Yes, one of those prepaid ones. I've never actually used one of those, Ben, but I know you can get those, can't you? And uh, good morning to Duke, who joins us right at the end of the show. God, man. Right at the end. Where have you been, Duke? You've got a couple of days off anyway, haven't you? So enjoy your time off. Uh, it's Wednesday night tonight, gang. I'll be hosting a quiz night tonight, uh, each and every Wednesday. That's at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at 10.30. It's a lovely night there. Uh, very, very friendly. We don't take life too seriously. In there. Well, I never take life too seriously, as you well know. But if you want to join us uh, tonight or any Wednesday, do join us for our quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar, Upper Street, Islington, 8.30 to 10.30. If you're coming tonight, ring now and book a table. OK? I shall disappear now. Before I go, download that Waze onto your little mobile phones and use that uh, to drive around. I think you'd be impressed <clears throat> with um, with how it... The, the symbols on there take a little bit of getting used to. And I have as yet to find a website that has all the symbols. You can see occasional websites with some of the symbols, but not all of them. So uh, I, I highly recommend you download that onto your phone and give it a go, all right? Thank you for watching and listening to the show this morning. Enjoy your Wednesday, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio now.